We have four straight days of NWSL games to close out the season. But first, we begin tonight here on Thursday evening in Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky, as Race in Louisville gets set to host Gotham FC. Welcome in. I'm Josh Tolan. With me is former Canadian international Kaylin Kyle. And Kaylin, you look at these standings, it's simple for Gotham, a win, and they're in. Yeah, and you look at Gotham, obviously, they're playing a home and away versus racing. They have a game in hand. Selfishly, I hope this ends in a draw because I want to see it come down to that final day. But, I mean, you look at Gotham and you look at their current form and just how good they've been. You would almost think that they should get the three points here tonight. And if not, they'll get it on Sunday. You go back to their last game against Kansas City. Struggled in that one, just coming up with a draw against Kansas City. Yeah, and I mean, you look at Kansas City and they've completely shifted momentum. A great ball in the middle one, and then it was none other than Perth. She has been on fuego, to say the least, but then it was just the continuous pressure. I mean, it's a really sloppy foul inside this 18-yard box and goes down, goes to the penalty spot, and who steps up? Kristen Edmonds, phenomenal. She's played all over the pitch, started in that number six role and showed up. And then on the opposite end, you have Kaylin Sheridan coming back from Canadian national team duty on their victory tour up in Canada. Um, started off, obviously, in Ottawa, and she's just a fabulous goalkeeper. You look at this, only allowed 19 goals in 22 games this season. Her leadership, she's continuing to grow. She's continuing to blossom as a player. I mean, she's learning from the players in and around her and also learning from her national team goalkeeper in Stephanie Labe. On the opposite end, though, she's going up against an Ebony Salmon. Six goals, two assists, 13 shots on target. Youngest player in the league or to lead an NWSL in scoring this season. Been phenomenal in tight spaces, 1v1 battles, and then just the precision. I mean, she can finish anywhere in and around this 18-yard box, and she makes it look seamless. And now we will take a look at our starting 11 for both sides, and we'll begin with Mario Sanchez in race in Louisville. Yeah, and there's only one change to this lineup in that back line. Everything else remains the same. McCaskill still finds herself on the bench, but we'll probably see her come on. Obviously, Emily Fox is that one change, just coming back off international duty with the U.S. Women's National Team, which she was phenomenal. So we'll probably see her in this match as well. And then on the other side for Scott Parkinson, this will be his 11 that he rolls out tonight here in Louisville. And it's this front three of Anumanu, Lloyd, and Purse. Dynamic. I mean, they've been phenomenal. Just the interplay with them as well. With Anumanu, she has come alive. The confidence is just oozing out of her. And then you look at this midfield. I have been a huge supporter of this midfield. I mean, Ali Long, the acquisition since coming here has completely changed. And then obviously Mandy Freeman coming back into this 11. I love this partnership with Freeman and Lewandowski. Well, who will come out with the three points? Will race in Louisville spoil the fun for Gotham as they look to clinch a spot in the playoffs with a win? We will find out as 90 minutes will decide the game here tonight at Lynn Family Stadium. We'll have it all for you right here next.
Welcome back to Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky, as we are moments away from racing Louisville and Gotham FC. Racing Louisville looking for that fifth win of the season. Meanwhile, a win tonight for Gotham FC, and they will clinch a playoff spot. We already do know three teams have clinched, of course, with Portland winning the NWSL Shield, but still, spots open really you're looking at you can see moving from spots two to seven here in the nwsl standings but three points on the line here tonight for gotham a game that they just kind of want to wrap up knowing that they're going to go into the playoffs here this weekend you look at Gotham and you look at their result coming off Kansas, that 1-1 draw, they won't be happy with that result, but you look at their form before then, they were outstanding. I mean, this front three have been so good together. Obviously, Lloyd just coming back off break, got subbed out in that U.S. Women's National Team uh, match. Obviously, the, the the round of applause she got, I, she's just such a fabulous player on and off the pitch. Um, again, playing against someone like her, I hated it because you never wanted to go 1v1 versus Carly Lloyd because nine times out of the ten, and she, you were either on the ground or she's nutmegged you or done something spectacular. So, again, to just have the career that she's had, what a moment for her here to be able to clinch the playoffs tonight. You look at what she's done in her career, 315 U.S. national caps as well as 134 goals. Here in the NWSL, though, she has scored 42 regular season goals. She's looking to add to that total here tonight as Race and Louisville will have the first corner of the evening for Race and Louisville coming off their first win under interim coach Mario Sanchez as they got the victory 3-1 to one over Orlando. Big game once again for Ebony Salmon, a goal and two assists for the young English woman. And also ended a nine-game winless drought. Near post. Chance here, but headed on by Malay, headed away by Lewandowski. Pushed back by Nagasato, still hopping around. And coming up with it is Carly Lloyd. Great send off for Carly Lloyd, taking off her jersey and having the jersey now of Carly Hollins. We were wondering if she was maybe going to be wearing that jersey tonight, if we'd get a surprise, but she's going with Lloyd at least for tonight. We'll see if that remains for Sunday as well. Some more excitement that she could possibly pull out as McCall Zerboni, the captain, once again for Gotham, will play it over to Ali Long. And you look at the jersey sales for Lloyd. Obviously, anyone in their right mind that's a massive fan of Lloyd, you're buying that second jersey. So I, I would love to see it if she does come out on Sunday, but I completely understand if she ends her career in Lloyd with that number 10 jersey on. Just such a remarkable career she's had. Zerboni pushing up the field with the right foot. An easy one hop there into Katie Lund. Katie Lund with her first ever NWSL regular season win in that victory over Orlando, of course, really where she made her name known here in the NWSL is in the Women's Cup, where she comes in and what she does, she scores a goal and then makes marvelous <laughs> saves in the PKs in the championship against Bayern Munich. I got to give a shout out, obviously, everyone tuning in on Twitch and keeper notes. Uh, really good one here. Last time Carly Lloyd was in the NWSL playoffs was was back in 2013. She scored two goals to eliminate Sky Blue and take Western New York Flash to the final versus Portland. So see if they can do it again this season. This Thanks, one, keeper notes. This one played down the line. A chance here crossed in and it's going to be cut out by Gina Lewandowski. Kawasumi. Looking for Midge Purse, who's scored in three straight games for Gotham. Nine goals on the season now for Purse. Tied for second best in the NWSL. Ashley Hatch of the Washington Spirit leads the league with 10. Long coming to the near side. Didasco. This one off Nagasato and will stay in play. And it's a really interesting four racing coming out here against Gotham. Uh, obviously, you look at some of the players on the bench that would probably start, well, would start in this team. You look at Emily Fox coming back from a very successful stint with the U.S. Women's National Team. You look at McCaskill, obviously sat last match due to the yellow card accumulation, but is available off the bench. So really interesting that they wouldn't start these players, but completely understand. You look at racing, and they're really looking for the future. They're looking at which players can make this roster next season, which players can fill in the spots maybe that if a McCaskill is out. And I like that they're doing this against a very good side of Gotham. 
course, we do have the two expansion sides coming in next year in Angel City as well as San Diego. Grace Louisville does have roster protection, though, with Angel City after the trade of Kristen Press. Didasco. This is the second meeting between these two teams. The first one ended in a one-to-one -one draw. Of course, these two teams will see one another once again on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. That game, though, will be at Red Bull Arena. Here, great look at interim coach Mario Sanchez. Talking about that win. Talking about how the players were working hard. They really deserved that win. Gave up the early goal, but talked about how they were able to get back into it. Really stayed composed and stuck with the game plan. And you look how exciting this league has been in, in 2021. I mean, every week the games have been fantastic. The table is always moving. I mean, you started with Orlando Pride at that number one spot, really exciting, and it's very much shifted and obviously wrapping up in November. But then it's a massive December with the expansion draft having to, happening December 18th. So we got you covered until Christmas, guys. We got that. We have, we'll also have the NWL College draft coming up. It just does not slow down as Didasco will poke this ball forward to Mitch Purse. Purse cuts it to her left. Zerboni playing it out wide to Kawasumi. Into Lloyd. Oh. Lloyd to her right. Lloyd now to her left. Back to Anamanu and blocked away by Lund. They chipped on and that one will cross the line. And Gotham has the first goal of the night here in the seventh minute. Great job by Anamanu sticking with that. I mean, the GOAT herself doing GOAT things on the pitch. Dances around two defenders. You can see racing, can't believe their eyes. I mean, Carly Lloyd, take a bow. I mean, Purse here, it's a, it's a lucky bobble. Comes and falls to Zerboni. Zerboni throws this one out to this left-hand side. And how about this? Cuts on the right, cuts another defender with her right foot, and then just has the vision and awareness to find Anumanu. I'm laughing because she makes this look effortless. Carly Lloyd, please do not retire on us. I'm willing, if your legs aren't moving anymore, to wheel you out onto the pitch because she's just such a joy to watch. You look at what Anumanu has done this season. Now eight goals. That, though, was her first goal in her last nine games. The last time she scored was on August 21st when she had a brace. You also add now that she has eight goals. You have her teammate Mitch Purse just sitting above her here in the Golden Boot Chase with nine. Three players tied on nine. Maybe Anamano see if she can get some goals here together tonight and Sunday. Maybe she can be in that race for that top spot in the league. I mean, eight goals for Anamanu, and this was a player that was in and out of this lineup at the beginning of the season, really didn't have that confidence, and then started to find the confidence, started to find what makes her successful. And yes, she's good with the ball at her feet, but she's very good at getting into good goal scoring opportunities. It's because of the vision and awareness that she has off the ball. She knows how to manipulate defenders, and it's really come from learning from players like Carly Lloyd, midfielders in and around her. She's been outstanding for Gotham in this later part of the season. You look at Anamana now with eight goals. Her career best in the regular season, you go back to 2019, when she had two for O.L. Reign last year's fall series, though she did have three, but she has really come on strong here in 2021. Didasco, Zerboni trying to combina combination pass on that, but cut out once again by Racing Louisville. Chance here for Kaiser. Kaiser turning away from Ali Long. Now back to the midfield, Bonner. Here's Kaylee Real. Kaylee Real was with Gotham in 2020 before going on loan to Paris FC. Real to Nagasato, who's wearing the captain's armband tonight for racing Louisville, gives it over to Kawasumi. Anamanu looking for that second goal, looking for Purse though instead. 
And this is that vision and awareness you see Anamanu just sitting in that little gap space, pulling off those two back defenders in the biggest spot. And she sees the run up Purse down this right hand side and Purse just holds up this run, wanted it to feed instead of in behind. But it's just the partnerships that are starting to build with this front three of Lloyd, Anamanu and Purse. It's been fantastic. Scott Parkinson specifically spoke about those three. He wants to get them higher up the field than the, what they were earlier this season. He feels like that's going to be where they're most dangerous and creative pushing them forward. Malay. Bonner. Real will relay it back to Bonner. Didasco. Looking for Anamanu as it's repelled away by Racing Louisville. It's going to be a handball called against McCall Zaboni. Look at this Gotham side on the road this season, 17 points. A win tonight would set a new club record. The most that they've scored on the road, 19 points coming back in the 2014 season. Salmon going right at Didasco to the end line. Didasco able to cut her off. Kaiser. This ball won away by Didasco and played up to Purse. Look at Racing Louisville, last week's win against Orlando, the first time they've won a game after trailing. Hoping to do that possibly here tonight against Gotham as they trail 1-0 to zero here in the 12th minute. And look, Racing show moments of brilliance where they look like such a good team, defensively tough to break down, and then attacking threats with players like Ebony Salmon, um, players like McCaskill, CC Kaiser. It's been good. It just hasn't been consistent enough. Now that happens when you have an expansion team. They're really trying to find which players work best where, and, and you can look at this game as well. I mean, you look at someone like Emily Fox, obviously, yes, played midweek, so probably didn't want her to get the minutes. They're already out of the playoffs, and just testing those players of, with those two expansion teams coming into the season, obviously, a lot of players maybe could leave. Um, maybe they're looking for spots to fill. Where is the most um, spots that they're looking at, whether it's in the midfield, whether it's at the front line, whether it's at this back line. So I like that he's testing these players here. McClure looking for Salmon, but that pass cut out by Mandy Freeman. Eddie. Here's Lloyd. Purse loses possession. Guatemala nearly got that back, but able to break it up is Julia Ashley. This result, if this result holds Gotham get the three points here, this jumps them all the way to third spot with 36 points. And, and then you look at Houston, if it does, 30, they're on 32 at the moment. Obviously, North Carolina at 32 points, and then Chicago in that fifth spot at 35. Purse, Lund out. Now Julia Ashley with it. Ashley drafted number six overall by Gotham in 2019, but went overseas and played. Now back here in the NWL with Race in Louisville. Bonner back to Lund. Neely Martin once again he has started outside back position. Look at her and her journey here. Undrafted, was a preseason invitee from the University of Alabama and has really found herself a home right now with the race in Louisville. Graduated with a chemical engineering degree from Alabama.
Salmon trying to get through two defenders, unable to do so. Anamano, the lone goal scorer in this game. Bonner, McClure. Winning back possession is Anamano. Long coming to the near side and Didasco. Play it to the near side. Ashley. Race Louisville, they've now allowed a goal in the last 16 games. Again, they want to finish off this season strong. They won't get the clean sheet tonight, but maybe Sunday when these two teams meet at Red Bull Arena as Purse crosses it in. Wanted to go to Anamanu on that one. You could see the thumbs up, but just could not connect. Up and in, up and in. Come on, Taylor, let's go. Up. Long coming out of the circle. Lloyd out wide, Anamanu. Has Purse inside. Anamano in this one, headed away. Zerboni. Kawasumi always dangerous on the outside. And a corner here for Gotham. And you look at Ali Long and you look at McCall Zerboni's positioning in this midfield, just being able to break up the play. And this is where racing are struggling to get out of their back line. They're trying to play through these midfield platforms and just nothing is on because of the pressure from the midfield of Gotham. And then when they do win it, they don't sit on the ball. The first thought, play forward, find our front runners by Carly Lloyd's feet and let Carly Lloyd work that magic in that final third. You can see that partnership already with Lloyd and Anumanu that it's just that quick pass, whereas before it took two, three touches from Lloyd to then find Anumanu. Well, that's not the case anymore. Salmon. Salmon push up that far touch line after returning from international duty with the U23s of England. Didasco, one of the leaders on this club. So many veterans now with Gotham FC leading the way. You mentioned Ali Long, the captain's armband, McCall Zerboni, of course, Carly Lloyd. Didasco, and then you can't forget about uh, Gina Lewandowski. Nagasato looking for Kaiser, offside flag is up. Just outside the area, now enters. Takes a deflection and goes wide. It's just another good build up play. You can see Lloyd here with two, three, four, cover, support, another player in and around that 18, but decides to take this one herself, tries to go on target with this one. A good defensive block here just to push this one wide. Once again, Carly Lloyd creating there in that final third. He set up that first goal to Anamano, and now Didasco will stutter step and now play it on the ground. Ali Long will play it up top to Elizabeth Eddy. Yeah. 
Zaboni. Blonde in her second season out of Arkansas. A little heavy of a touch there. Mitch Purse able to get to it for Gotham. Goes between the legs. Was looking for Anamanu, but played away by Bonner. Excellent opportunity here for Gotham just outside of the 18. You see the replay on this one, just trying to clear this ball, comes off the face and then Purse. This is where I, I just love her. You can see her have that quick look over her shoulder. She knows the foul is coming from behind and she just kind of stutter steps and stops because she knows that pressure's coming behind, goes to ground and a good opportunity outside this 18 yard box. Zerboni will take this, back post. Oh, Anamanu there was streaking for it, just could not get her head to it. And this is such a fabulous ball from Zerboni. I mean, just bends this one far post with this left foot here again. Just fabulous ball in behind this back line, far enough away from Lund that she can't come out and attest to this. And Anamanu just not being able to get her head to put this one past Lund. Anamano, one of three players on this Gotham side to have a brace on the year. The other two being Mitch Purse and Gaetan Tine. Freeman back, still working her way to full 100%, but great to see her in that back line for this Gotham side. She started the season at that center back, and then after her injury, Estelle Johnson taking over. Still Johnson back with the club after representing Cameroon, but on the bench tonight. Ashley, another former draft pick of Gotham. Kaiser. A former dash player working her way inside to Nagasato. Oh. Nagasato able to get around Lewandowski, crossing. And McClure falls over, only cleared as far as Kaiser. Trying to bring it to her left. Kaiser. One too many touches there, but Nagasato bending. And I believe this is Eddie on this tackle. I think, I'm pretty sure this is Eddie again. Good little intricate play down this left-hand side. Fabulous little bit of skill from Nagasato and CC Kaiser just rolling out this right-hand side. Great run across Ebony Salmon. Ed, um, that is Eddie. Eddie has to go to ground here, and she has to time this perfectly. Again, CC Kaiser cutting top of the box twice. McCall winning this first tackle. Then Nagasato, a fabulous little chip going over the ball, but a perfectly timed tackle from Eddie to keep this one 1-0. One Elizabeth Eddy in her seventh season at a USC, spent a majority of it with Western New York and North Carolina before coming over to Gotham in a trade a couple years back. Back in college at the University of Southern California. She was a two-sport athlete playing lacrosse as well. Scott Parkinson, the man in charge now for Gotham, hoping to lead this team to the playoffs for the first time since 2013. And this is a little bit more life into racing. They're really pinned back into their half of the first 23 minutes of this match. A little bit more movement, a little bit more players trying to take on two, three players. Just pull the defensive side of Gotham out because they do sit in, they bank in, and then try to catch you on that quick counterattack with those three front runners. Martin trying to get by Kawasumi. Kawasumi right on the hip. Kaylin Sheridan also back from international duty, played in the second half in the victory over New Zealand by a score of five to one in that victory tour. Evelyn Vian also back with the club. Hey, 
McClure tripped up, and there's the whistle. Of course, Katie McClure scoring her first regular season goal in that win over Orlando. will set up. Headed away by Lloyd. Forward, forward. Forward. Ashley able to track it down for racing Louisville. Looking for Malay, but too strong as this will cross the end line. But I don't mind this. I mean, yes, it's too long, but this is that counter movement that racing were missing in that first 25 minutes that we saw last match versus Orlando. And obviously that big result as well, 3-1 versus Orlando. It was the movement with the front runners. It was the late midfield runs that we're seeing that Orlando just couldn't solve the problem. So you're starting to see them grow back into that, especially without some big players in the lineup. Obviously, Emily Fox, uh, McCaskill, they're just such pivotal players within this team. Zerboni to Kawasumi. Kawasumi 2014 best 11 in the NWSL. Switching sides to Didasco. The outside back will loop it in. Long making her 149th regular season start in the NWSL. Only three players have more. Lauren Barnes, McCall Zerboni, and Merritt Mathias of the North Carolina Courage. So possibly on Sunday, Allie Long could be starting in her 150th game in the NWSL. I think she's just been such a good player within the NWSL. She never puts a foot wrong. You look at her pass completion, it's second to none within the league year after year after year. She really epitomizes what a number six role looks like, breaking up the play, getting in these big pockets of, sp of spaces, plays forward, break lines. I mean, she's just such a class player as well. Look at her, another player that's obviously had success at the international level, two NWSL championships as well, both with the Portland Thorns, came over in a trade at the very end of the Challenge Cup from O.L. Reign, as this is played up to Purse. Anamanu trailing. Anamanu looking for Purse, headed away. Lloyd. Anamana, the lone goal scorer. Didasco. And a corner coming for Gotham. Another player that's really come alive this season for Gotham, Didasco. I think she's been one of the most consistent players week in and week out for this Gotham side. Just consistently the defensive work she does, but then she's also really progressed her game with service from wide areas, taking players on. Then obviously you saw her first goal in the NWSL, just how much it meant to her and just so well deserved. You look at what she's done this season. You talk about her consistency. Team of the month every month of the season, except for September. So maybe looking to add October to that, but obviously hoping to get her team in the playoffs with a win tonight. Dasco, part of that trade with the Washington Spirit a couple years ago, then also brought over Estelle Johnson. Archie also a part of that trade. She's seen plenty of action between the sticks this season for Gotham as well when Kaylin Sheridan's been away. Let's 
Anamanu. Purse on the near side. And tripped up once again, this time by Julia Ashley, and another great opportunity, and we'll have our first yellow card handed out to Julia Ashley. And you just take the, a look at the replay here. Purse just getting on this half turn and just driving, isolating this defender. You can see caught flat-footed Ashley just pulls her arm up because she knows Purse is getting uh, by her, but it's just the skillful feat of Purse to go 1v1, isolate these defenders, make them guess the wrong way, a little dip of the shoulder here and put Gotham in another dangerous area. Zerboni back post once again. Final game at home on the season for Race in Louisville, but this is not the final game that will be held at Lynn Family Stadium. Of course, the NWSL Championship, November 20th, 12 p.m. Eastern, right here at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville. Get your tickets at nwslsoccer.com backslash championship. Who will be the two teams that meet in Louisville this year? Well, we will find out in just a matter of weeks. And by the way, look at this stadium. It is honestly spectacular. I mean, the fan support, just the, the ground itself. I mean, a beautiful grass pitch. And you look at Kansas City, what they're developing there. Yes, I know we're, we're always very hard on the playing surface, but look what they are investing within that team. It's world class. It's incredible to say the least. And you look at all these new teams coming in and just putting what these players deserve right in front of them just to make them even more successful right in our own backyards. $70 million stadium will be built on the river in Kansas City and specifically for these NWSL players, the first ever of its kind here. Anamanu. Once again, tripped up by race in Louisville. We have had the one yellow card handed out to Julia Ashley. Lloyd. Working her way towards the end line, unable to get around Otto. This Gotham side unbeaten in their last six. Really want to continue to find their way forward is what Scott Parkinson said and really get to their offensive threats here. Mitch Purse, Carly Lloyd, and Ify Anamano. And of course, they have found that here tonight with Anamano creating chances, whether it be Lloyd or getting a couple fouls just outside the area to create some free kick opportunities. Real will play it to the near side, and Malay with the back heel. Nagasato. Good movement here from Race and Louisville, and then the giveaway, but it will earn them a corner as Lewandowski just had the poor touch right there. You can see the last four attacks that have been really dangerous for racing has been down this left-hand side, just creating overloads. And it started with a player of Nagasato just getting on the ball, sucking in defenders, which then ultimately opens up spaces in behind this defense. CC Kaiser popping off as that number 10, playing in those pockets of space. Just got to work on the service inside this 18-yard box. Just hasn't been there yet this evening. Near post ball, still loose, and now blocked away. Otto with the shot attempt there for Race Louisville. Otto, his pass cut out by Elizabeth Eddy. Freeman. Chance here now for Salmon, if she can get by Freeman. It's a 
good, a good play there by Elizabeth Eddy, at least clearing out of the area for a moment. Kaiser. Malay wins the ball back. And you can see the, just the switch in momentum for racing. They're playing ultra aggressive off that back line, stepping to players, putting pressure on, and then condensing the spaces. I like this from them because I think they're giving them a little bit too much respect here at home at Lynn Family Stadium. I think you have to go at this side. Yes, you're, you have nothing really to play for, but leave it all on the pitch. Really test this Gotham side. Seventh minute, one to nil is our score. Visitors on top in this one as Gotham got their one goal from Ifioma Anamano in the seventh minute, her eighth goal of the season. A win tonight, and Gotham is in. Salmon. Lundowski will play this out to Kawasumi. Kawasumi, World Cup winner in 2011, also a silver medalist. Won that World Cup with Yuki Nagasato. Otto gets by Lloyd. Now to the near side, but this one too strong as it goes over the head of Julia Ashley. bit more than five minutes away from half. Of course, we'll have highlights and stats from this one. We'll also have what's ahead here in the NWSL. And we'll look at what the playoff seedings could possibly look like. And at least have the format for that for you at half. Ashley. Real will play to Bonner. Bonner, majority of her career in the WSL. Last few seasons with Manchester City. Malay. Play square ball. Kaiser blocked away. Malay looking for McClure and oh. just couldn't get her foot on it. And another, another good opportunity down this left-hand side for racing. Just the confidence that they're oozing. Gotham need to do a better job as this game wears on because racing haven't taken their foot off the gas pedal. They've turned the momentum around. They're playing ultra aggressive and then sending numbers forward on this left-hand side. Katie McClure could have just got her foot on that. Has her second regular season goal. More importantly, an equalizer here tonight against Gotham. A tie or a loss will not guarantee Gotham a spot in the playoffs.
Well, he just tapping his outside, but Lloyd right there on Amanu. Now back to Lloyd. 39 years old and still gliding by defenders. Otto. Bonner back to Lund. And now Juno Lundowski with it for Gotham. Plays to Ali Long, who will relay it back to Freeman. Eddie. Freeman, Freeman from a soccer family. Her older sister has also played soccer in college. Lloyd, and flag was up. It's crazy to think that Lloyd played just over 60 minutes with the national team on Tuesday, traveled back, and now traveled to racing and is in the starting 11 here and it has already made such a mark in this match leading to the goal for Gotham to give them this lead early on. You have to think she wanted to play some more minutes there, especially after that she came out, they scored <laughs> yeah. just goal after goal after goal. But what a close to Carly Lloyd's national team career and of course she's hoping that her career here in the NWSL continues on into the playoffs as she's looking for one of those trophies that she has yet to win, and that's an NWSL championship. You see this tackle here, Friedman just holding up this player, and it's not just for the tackle, it's just for the, the bear hug here. You can see Friedman saying, what, me? Yes, you. Again, I love this from Friedman, though. I love that she's come back into the starting 11, already making her mark. Her distribution is unbelievable from that back line, but it is the correct call, just trying to, to hold Salmon off because Salmon is such a good player with the ball at her feet. Chance here maybe for a late goal here in the first half for Racing Louisville. McClure headed backwards. Lloyd always around the ball. I know selfishly I said that I would love to see Lloyd play for another five years, but I would also love to see her, I feel like I'm her agent, I'd love to see her go into coaching as well. I mean, how incredible uh, would she be as a coach in this league or in and around the sport? I just think she epitomizes what it takes to be a true professional on and off the pitch. She's got that winning mentality. She understands the game so brilliantly. She's won everything imaginable. She's broken records, I mean. Definitely a player that would have plenty of knowledge to share about what it takes to be one of the world's best. I think a lot of people would come out of retirement to play on her team. Otto. Ashley being pressured, plays it back to real. Racing Louisville switching sides. Martin back to Otto. Kaiser. This one hits off Kaiser, stays in play.
been a pretty evenly matched in this first 40, 45 minutes. We're almost obviously at halftime. I think both teams have found their momentum. Gotham came out on the front foot and then racing starting to claw, claw their way back into this match. Started pressing from their back line up through the midfield. McClure out wide to Salmon. Maybe one last chance here for racing. Salmon looking for Kaiser and Lewandowski right there for Gotham. Oh, they're going to say that was last touch by Racine, so this will be a throw for Gotham. Looks like that was off Gotham, but Gotham will not argue. Lloyd. Lloyd with long ball. And there is the whistle to end the half. Gotham will go in the locker room up one to zero with a goal from Ifioma Anamanu. Kaylin, your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's been a very evenly matched first 45 minutes. The success for racing's really been down this left-hand side. So can they build momentum in the second half? Just to have a little bit more quality in the box or that final shot. And then for Gotham, just come out how they started this match, really much on the front foot, started playing a little bit quicker through the midfield. But again, 1-0 lead going into halftime away from home is a good result so far and punches them closer up that table. Racing Louisville looks to make it back-to-back -back games with a win coming from behind as they trail in this one at half. Meanwhile, Gotham looking to clinch a final spot in the playoffs. We'll step aside. We'll be back with highlights and stats as well as some notes from around the league here. Gotham 1, Racing Louisville 0 at half.
45 minutes in the books between race in Louisville and Gotham FC here at Lynn Family Stadium. And well, NWCL Championship will be back here at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky, Saturday, November 20th at 12 p.m. Eastern. You can get your tickets at nwclsoccer.com backslash championship. Already over 5,000 tickets have been sold for that. Be plenty of stuff going around, around the league and around the city for that big event come November 20th as we'll take a look at the upcoming schedule and still with playoffs to be found here, teams trying to make that one last push and try to solidify those final spots. It really is and all these teams probably watching this match here tonight because a win again pushes Gotham into third place with 36 points. I mean playoffs are on the line. All these games matter. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. So get your food in, get your drinks in, whatever you're doing, but you're not leaving this weekend from those couches. And here now we'll take a look at the format for the playoff schedule. Of course, things beginning Sunday, November 7th. Third seed will take on the sixth seed. Fourth seed will be hosting the fifth. And then one and two will begin in the semifinals. Winners of that, first, well, I guess Portland is the winner, so they will take on four or five. And then three versus six will take on that number two seed. Yeah, it's going to be fabulous. Obviously, Portland and OL Reign punching their ticket through, and that home field advantage, obviously, going to Portland, difficult place to go and play. But it's also fun for a visiting team to go as well because fans are fans. You hear that energy, you feel that energy in OL Reign as well. A good place to go and play. This is such a good 2021 season it's you have you couldn't have wrote the script better washington spirit have also booked their way into the playoffs will gotham be the fourth tonight if they can hold on to this score line right now they would advance to the playoffs but race and louisville will look to make it difficult when we return we'll have highlights and stats
Welcome back. Racing level trailing at half one to nil against Gotham FC as we take a look back at the highlights from the first 45 minutes of play between Racing Louisville and Gotham FC. And it's actually been a pr pretty evenly matched game in this first 45, but it starts in the early minutes with the seventh minute. I mean, Carly Lloyd, have yourself a day dancing around. Not one defender, not two defenders, but three. And then Anamanu just being able to tuck this one away. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And just the partnership that Anamanu and Carly Lloyd have built throughout the season has been incredible. I mean, Anumanu, ninth goal of the season. Fabulous to see her continuing to flourish. Another good opportunity here in the 19th minute. Almost a copy and paste and repeat of the last opportunity. Carly Lloyd this time taking on that extra defender. Good block here by Racing's defense to just push this one wide. And then on the 23rd minute, I mean, I touched on this moment with Racing. Just the build-up play down this left-hand side has been very, very good, creating the overload. CC Kaiser rolling outside and then just having the confidence. This one just going up and over the bar, but a great opportunity uh, just moments before this. Just Ebony Salmon just getting denied with a fabulous tackle from Eddie. There you see that shot by Nagasato. Closest one on the night for Race in Louisville as we take a look at the stats. Possession being controlled here by Gotham in that first 45 minutes of play. Yeah, and it's the shots for me. I mean, you look at racing getting into dangerous areas, just not having that quality in and around that 18-yard box. And then Gotham, four of those shots being on target. Obviously, one of those being the goal and three. Again, not enough quality when they are in good goal-scoring opportunities. You look at Gotham, though. With the, with the three points going to third place, it's going to be interesting if they come out and really go for this match, put this one away early, or just quite happy with that 1-0 lead. Racing Louisville, they just need to get that first shot on goal. They need to find a way to challenge Kaylin Sheridan here in the second half as they look to tie things up in the second 45. We'll have that for you in re-return right here on Twitch.
Welcome back as we get set for the second half here at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky between racing Louisville and Gotham FC. Josh Tolan, Canadian International. Kaylin Kyle with you. Kaylin, what are you looking for specifically here from racing Louisville as they look to get back into this game? I think for racing to go for this match, you, you look at this team and they're starting to really produce matches. You look at that 3-1 performance versus Orlando. Yes, they're without players like McCaskill and Emily Fox in this game, but they have such quality. Now, it's really just building momentum into that next season. Players, you know, that might be on the fringe of this team really implementing themselves in this match to say, hey, I want to be here next season. I want to be within this squad, and I want to push for a starting 11 position. You look at Gotham, meanwhile, if the scoreline holds, they clinch themselves a playoff. Do you expect them to try going for that other goal, or do you expect them to maybe hold back try to rest some players, get ready for Sunday's game. It's an interesting one because you look at this racing side, they have players that can punish you. You have players like Ebony Salmon, you have players like CeCe Kaiser that can join that late point of attack, but also Gotham, they have players that want to win matches. They have the quality in this front three with Purse, Lloyd, and Anamanu. If I'm Gotham, I'm going for another one and really closing out this match. Lloyd into the area. Bonner backing up, step over, and Bonner's going to win this one. player we haven't really been able to talk about as much as we like in this one is Gotham's Ebony Salmon. You go back to that game against Orlando in that victory, a goal and two assists. And we were talking with Scott Parkinson about her after she's returned now from U23 duty, duty with England. Just what goes on notice is how old she is. She's still so young in this league. Don't tell me your age. It's going to make me feel so <laughs> old. Well, then maybe we'll hold off on that. But um, she's a player that is just really making a difference now, just 21 years old. Oh my and you talk goodness. about it, her pace, her finishing is just phenomenal. And hoping to see more of that tonight, just how much immense potential she has. Has not had a break in over a year with the duty that she had yet last year in the WSL, as well as national team duty. Got her first cap earlier this year. And then of course here with U23s, but her pace, her strength, her ability to link up, and says it, that. I think her confidence as well. She oozes confidence. She honestly, the first touch, her first game in the NWSL, I remember it like it was yesterday, that top of the box and, and the little half turn beat three defenders and finished it. I mean, she has such a bright future for only being 21 years old. She understands the game so well. Her IQ is so high at, for a young player and also her confidence in this league because it's a very difficult league to come into when you are such a young player, to have the confidence to take players on, whether it's a 2v1, a 3v1, and she does it time and time again and she also has the quality as well playing with her back towards the net or picking the ball up in those little pockets of space this one chipped over to kaiser long right there to break it up and a throw here for racing louisville kaiser gets around kawasumi salmon Blocked away by Zerboni. Now Lloyd looking to spring a counter. Lloyd near touchline. Back with her was Neely Martin. And another one of those young players for Race Louisville that's gotten better and better as the season has progressed. Can I give you another little stat? And I can't take any credit for it. Keeper notes, you're fantastic. Just put this little timbit it for us. Also, if Gotham wins out, Rain loses, and Spirit win, we have a three teams tied on 39 points. Then Gotham gets that number two seed. So a chance still for Gotham to host one more home game, maybe more, depending on if they do get that second seed. But as of right now, we do know their final home game, at least in the regular season, on Sunday against this race in Louisville side. Home and home to close out the year. Four straight days of NWSL soccer beginning tonight with this one. You look at what's happening tomorrow. You have Orlando hosting Chicago at 7 p.m. Eastern. Saturday, we have two games, Kansas City and O.L. Reign and Portland at North Carolina, and then finishing with Washington and Houston, as well as this Gotham and Racing Louisville side. 
And I love people in this chat. We do see your comments. So let us know where you are tuning in from around the world. And a lot of people saying, math makes my brain hurt. Thank goodness we have Keeper Notes. I'm right there with you. I was terrible in math, almost flunked out. So Keeper Notes, keep those coming for me. Inward swinging ball from Didasco. Back post, headed down, then right at Bonner. Didasco sends it right back in, and that one off the post by Onomar, the follow up by Lloyd. And Lloyd tripped up there on the collision. Two great chances from Gotham there. I believe the first one might have came from Lloyd, second one from Onomanu. And two fantastic opportunities here from Gotham. Fabulous ball from Didasco with this left foot. Bends this in and around traffic. Anumanu gets up for the initial header, just pulls off the back shoulder, goes off the woodwork. And then you can see Carly Lloyd here just going in for the second opportunity. You can't see a good angle of it, but it looks like she just gets nicked just on the top of her foot. So nothing, hopefully nothing too serious. Just one of those that sting, that make you feel a little bit nauseous, but you're able to play through. Two great header attempts there by Gotham, and then the follow-up there off the post by Anamanu, and then the attempt by Lloyd, but tripped up in the process as she's trying to still walk this off. Didasco now on the far end. Freeman. Malay up to midfield and McClure has Sam into her left. McClure. Chance here! And ties it up! CC Kaiser puts Racing Louisville on the board with an equalizer. And it's a light show here at Racing and well deserved. I was just about to scream, McClure, look right. You have Ebony Salmon driving on. Just slows up the tempo a little bit and allows CC Kaiser to create that overload, create that 3v2, and it's a fantastic goal. And this is that moment that I was talking about of Gotham are pressing for the game. This is where racing can hurt you. McCall Zerboni losing possession here in the middle of the pitch. McClure picking this one up, driving at this back line. I love that she takes this extra touch to really isolate the defender of Friedman. I thought she was going to play right and decides to play left. And how about this for a finish as well? Fantastic from CC Kaiser. Takes it with her right foot and then finishes it with her right foot to give Racing a 1-1 draw at the moment. What a fantastic build-up play and counter-attacking football from Racing. Kaiser with her fourth goal of the season. Meanwhile, Katie McClure with an assist. Well, Racing Louisville staying in this one. You can go back to that win against Orlando. First ever come from behind victory for Racing Louisville, hoping to make it two in a row here as they look to take down Gotham. Centered in, Kawasumi. Get up! Eddie playing it right back to the spot over on Amanu. One of the things we've talked about with Mario Sanchez is the effort that his club gives week in and week out, never quitting in games, always playing the full 90. Yes, their season may be done, but they still can at least spoil the fun of Gotham. Salmon. Didasco. Lewandowski pops it up. Purse on the outside into Zerboni. Malay coming wide. Neely Martin. Kawasumi right with her. Over to help is Elizabeth Eddy.
And we have ourselves a game here. I mean, everyone tuning in from all around the world, from England to New Zealand, from Ottawa, Canada. I know I sound like a broken record. No one from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I'm just kidding. There's probably someone in there. But again, it's great to see so many people tuning in from all around the world to catch this match here. And, uh, and like you alluded to, racing here, trying to really upset Gotham with just one game left after this one that obviously will be played uh, against Gotham, that home and away match. Beautiful facilities here at Lynn Family Stadium. And that was one of the things we talked about with Mario Sanchez. He's talked about just the commitment from this club, the facilities, the two meals these players get a day, the cafeteria that they have that they can go to, the nutrition, really just a first-class organization, the multiple fields, really hoping to see more of that from around the league, more investment from owners, of course, Kansas City, with the big announcement of the $70 million stadium that they'll be putting in, as well as $15 million towards a training facility. And it's crazy to think that those little things mean so much to the players. The first time that I ever got breakfast and lunch at a training ground was at Orlando. I played on numerous NWSL teams and I couldn't believe it. I was so thankful. And was it a lot? No, but it was the perfect food for athletes to get the job done in the training center. You didn't have to think about what you were making for breakfast. You didn't have to think, oh, I need to get home. I need to shower quick for recovery. More teams in the NWSL need to get on board with this. Well, you look at what Racing Louisville is also doing for after these players retire. They partner with Kentucky Fertility Institute to provide complementary fertility preservation services, including egg freezing, embryo freezing, and long-term storage for players, allowing these players another option to still get pregnant after their playing careers. And something like that, it sounds so simple, and more teams should be doing that. I mean, you look at these players that are playing in their 20s to their 30s and, and a lot of people look you have kids maybe at your late 20s and and you come to that stage do i retire do i have kids i know i came to that point i wanted to start a family but we didn't have those options you didn't have an option to freeze your eggs i don't i i don't even think it maybe came across the passive teams that this is such a fantastic idea so what racing is doing here is absolutely incredible on a mono that ball just too heavy of a touch but racing Louisville, some of these other sides setting the bar high for what a team and an organization can look like. Salmon. Now we will see our first subs of the night coming for race in Louisville. So Freya Olofsson will come in for Taylor Otto. Olofsson was on international duty with the U23s for Sweden. And now Savannah McCaskill will come in for Ebony Salmon. So you're looking at Salmon with her being on international duty, maybe some extra minutes in. Head coach or interim coach Mario Sanchez want to give her a break, get ready for Sunday in this final meeting between these two teams. So she's full go. He also talked about in our coaches call how she's just played just throughout this past year nonstop. So maybe those legs finally getting heavy here at the end of the season. No, I'm not having it. 21 years old, you could see here, and that is why the coach had that little conversation with her one-on-one, -on -one, because she wouldn't have been happy getting pulled out of a match like this where it's 1-1, one -one, the momentum. She hasn't played bad. She's been um, very good in this first 60 minutes. And again, but with that match just around the corner. But as a player, as a young player, you want to play 90 minutes. But obviously, coach knows best and has really implemented a strategy for these players that are coming back from international duty to not get injured. And that's first and foremost the most important thing. Savannah McCaskill was out the last game for Race in Louisville in that victory over Orlando with a yellow card. She got five, so she had to sit out the suspension as Didasco lofted forward, headed up by Lloyd, but off frame. Two great header attempts by Carly Lloyd here on corners in this game, but nothing able to get by Katie Lund. You asked for drama in this game. We got a late goal or early first, second half goal here 
from race in Louisville. Will we find a late one, possibly, by the ladies in Lavender? Oh, I like that. I've never heard that before. That's what they're going by, so oh. <laughs> it's not a bad one. Zerboni. Here's Kawasumi. Kawasumi with four assists on the year. Of course, she had four assists in one game for O.L. Reign back in the day. Zerboni. And you can start to see the frustration of Gotham right now. They're putting straight balls in for a straight run. Whereas in that first 45 minutes, they were getting balls into wide areas, whipping them in behind the back four and just far enough away where Lund couldn't punch them. Right now, when you have those midfields getting on it where you're 10, 15 yards outside of the 18, you got to move it a little bit. And you can see Carly Lloyd saying, hit that quick dish, use our midfield platforms, go from left to right to just to find different angles to get good quality service inside the box. Just too heavy of a touch right there once again from race in Louisville. Julie Ashley looking to connect with Yuki Nagasato, one of the leaders on this side. Armband tonight once again for Nagasato. Anamanu, the lone goal scorer for Gotham. Back to Long. McClure intercepts the ball for a moment. Gets right back on it. McCaskill trying to go between the legs of Allie Long. Allie Long there, she was stepped on, and then Elizabeth Eddy sent the ball right into her back. Purse. First three straight games with a goal, including a brace a couple games ago, but she's been relatively quiet here this evening. And when we talked with Scott Parkinson, just about Purse and what she can be, one of those players that was left out on the national team for the U.S. in these last friendlies, but talk about how she's really been a godsend, how she's just so intelligent, smart, a funny player, committed as a proper pro. Really, the one of the big things that separates her, though, is how she wants to get better. She's always very hungry and always asking questions. Talk about how Beviana is really helping to get the best out of her and push her to that next level. Nine goals on the season for Purse, tied for second best in the NWSL. And just going back to the, the Purse comment, I love everything you touched on, but also one thing that sets her apart from other players is she can play multiple roles. I mean, you look at someone like Crystal Dunn, Crystal Dunn can do the exact same thing. I mean, you can play her in the midfield, you can play her out on the wing, you can play her in a fullback position, but I think Purse, you saw when she was left out of that U.S. Women's National Team, then she had two stellar games back to back and she hasn't taken her foot off the gas pedal. A lot of questions in and around this U.S. Women's National Team because there's been so many good players that have flourished here in the NWSL, players that might potentially not have gone to the Olympic Games. You look at someone of Emily Fox, I mean, for me, one of the best fullbacks in the league and now getting her first call up. So again, it's pretty incredible to see just the growth of the, the women's game right here in our own backyard. McCaskill on the end line. Now to the corner. Clutter. The Dasco. Back to Lewandowski, who Scott Parkinson says is a coach on the field, has a bright future ahead of her. Does actually coach as well, so very much could be that route that she goes after her playing career is done. McCaskill from distance, and that will one hop into the arms of Kaylin Sheridan.
McCaskill. Looking for Kaiser, Nagasato also in the vicinity. How good has McClure been in this match tonight? She's really started all of these attacks. She's starting to come alive even more so in the second 45 minutes, popping off that front, that quick one-two touch soccer or football, wherever you're watching in the world, in the middle of the park, and then just being able to isolate defenders. Maybe a chance here for Purse. Oh, oh great tackle, but Purse still with it. Bonner with maybe a goal-saving tackle there. And absolutely a goal-saving tackle. This had to be time to perfection. If this wasn't time to perfection, it's last man back. This is a red card for a clear and obvious goal-scoring opportunity. Great ball by Carly Lloyd. You can see the defenders kind of all out of shape here. And then a fabulous time tackle inside, in and around this 18-yard box on purse. We've had two great tackles that have saved goals. You go back to the first half, Elizabeth Eddy having one for Gotham. And right there, Gemma Bonner for Racing Louisville. Kimba Bonner, a majority of her career in the WSL with Chelsea, also played with Leeds United, Liverpool, and then finishing out before coming over to the NWSL with Manchester City. And now we will have a substitution for Gotham as Paige Monahan will make her entrance and Naho Kawasumi will come off for Scott Parkinson. Both teams now making subs here into the second half. Monahan will come on. She does have a goal on the season. First player drafted ever out of Butler. And she just adds a spark as well, whether you start her or you bring her off the bench. She always seems to add something. She gets into the mix. She she does the dirty work. She can have the engine to, to track players defensively and offensively. So I don't mind this sub coming in. They need a little bit of a spark for Gotham. Paige Monahan grew up playing soccer in her backyard. Her older brother would put on boxing gloves and knock <laughs> away her shot attempts. Oh, I thought you were going to say knock away her. I was like, that's not much of a soccer in the backyard with the older brother. Paige Monahan, she battled an injury earlier this season, but getting back to full health. Another one of those players that can be a tremendous help here in this playoff push, as well as possibly into the playoffs if Gotham does make it. Monahan down the line, but this one's going to find its way out of play. Gotham now has allowed just 20 goals on the year. This is their lowest ever total. You go back, the most they've allowed in club history, you have to go back to 26 that they gave away in their first season in the NWSL in 2013. Strong defensive team this year, whether it was Frey Kuhn in charge or now Scott Parkinson. Freya Coom will now be the new Angel City coach. And you have Casey Stoney down in San Diego. We'll see some other coaches take way here after the season. The question is, what team is going to hire who? Carly Lloyd, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any insider information. I'm just hopeful. Well, just make her a player coach, then, <laughs> if that's going to be the case. Didasco. Here's Olofsson. Nagasato. Nagasato just on the edge. First minute, if you're just joining us, if you Oma Anamano got things going for Gotham in the seventh minute, then here in the second half, CC Kaiser would score in the 52nd minute, assisted by Katie McClure. 
final game at home for Race and Louisville. Their final game of the NWSL season will be at Red Bull Arena against this Gotham side. Of course, the NWSL championship will be head here, held here at Lynn Family Stadium on November 20th at 12 p.m. Eastern. You can get your tickets at nwslsoccer.com backslash championship. I had someone ask me the other day, who do you think will be in the final? And for the first time, whether playing in the NWSL or out of the NWSL, I genuinely don't know who I would put my money on. There hasn't really been a standout dominant team. Yes, Portland has already won the shield as this is going to be flicked back by Anumana and then covered up by Lund. Should we drop it into Twitch chat, see who everyone thinks? Should we put it in Let's the mix? Let's get some answers out Let's there. Let's get some answers. Twitch, who do you guys think is going to be in the final? We want to know. And obviously, just looking at this build-up play, Purse said it time and time again. She's just such a brilliant little player. It's a fabulous ball, 2v1 down this right-hand side. And Anumanu just cutting across the defenders. Good defensive play, though, just to pressure front and back of Anumanu. Just couldn't get the power to beat Lund. A lot of Washington fans here saying Washington, and then a lot of people saying Rain Thorns, Portland Spirit. Keep them coming. Yeah, love that attacking three for Washington Spirit with Trinity Rodman, Ashley Hatch, as well as Ashley Sanchez. Lloyd back working hard defensively. And that's, and that's another team, just you obviously touched on Washington, but obviously with just what had happened there, missed two of those games, had to forfeit, and they've absolutely been fantastic since uh, the end of the season. Obviously, Shayna Matthews coming in. I was lucky enough to call her match on the weekend when she was with Jamaican national team here in Drive Pink Stadium down in Miami. She was fantastic, spoke with her after the match, and she's just got such an electric personality. She makes you smile. She makes you want to be a better person. So you were on that call with me as well, Josh. It was uh, definitely a fun game. That was one that Jamaica should have won, but the Costa Rican goalkeeper, Solera, was just phenomenal in that one. NWSL fans, if you haven't heard of Solera, you need to go and rewatch that game. Phenomenal. If she's not in the NWSL in the next two years, I'd be shocked. Monahan attacking the area. Monahan blocked away by Kaylee Real. Corner for Gotham. Dasco to the back post. Get up. And Shayna Matthews will win the ball from Lloyd, but Purse right back with it. Purse trying to turn away from Matthews. Down the line for Monahan. Real will send it away, but only as far as Lloyd steps to her left. Turns away, Nagasata right there. And you can see the frustration starting to set in for these Gotham players. They've been knocking at the door, just haven't been able to pull the trigger. It's been really good defending from racing that cover the support, big tackles. And you can see Carly Lloyd shaking her there, her head because they can't find the answers to break down this racing side. They've tried to play through, they've tried to play around, but you have players in this back line like Freeman, Lewandowski, Eddie, Didasco that have been putting in fantastic tackles. Monaghan in the circle, plays it out. English, English. Ap apologies, I was talking about racing. <laughs> Anamana going wide. Three teams have clinched a playoff berth. Portland with the NWSL Shield, OL Reign, and Washington Spirit. Will Gotham be the fourth? They win tonight, and they are guaranteed a spot in the playoffs.
You mentioned Mandy Freeman's distribution earlier in this game. Scott Parkinson talked about that as well. Uh, she has the ability to put it on a rope from distance to another one of her teammates, and she'll try it right here. Anamano fell over at the spot, but a corner here for Gotham. Ninth corner of the night here for Gotham FC. Hurst. Gotham has had opportunities on set pieces. They've had a couple chances on a few different free kicks from just outside the area, but unable to capitalize on any of those opportunities. One goal for Gotham coming from a, the run of play with a beautiful solemnly move by Lloyd, finding Anamano who would stick with it to get the first goal for Gotham. Freeman. Another great look at the new man in charge and Scott Parkinson. Look at this, Gotham side. Lost one of their assistant coaches earlier in the year, Becca Morris, who ended up being the head coach of the University of Arizona. And then, of course, Freya Coombe going to Angel City, that making way for Scott Parkinson, who also brought along Bev Yanez, former soccer player here in the NWSL, professional player. And an incredible human being as well. I mean, just she epitomizes what it, what it took to be a, an amazing player, but now she's doing it off the pitch, which you love to see. Kaiser. Tidasco winning the ball back for Gotham. Anamano just outside the circle, coming to the near side. Monahan. Ali Long passing midfield. Monahan. Into the area. Honor with another solid play, this time in that six yard box. She has been tremendous tonight here for Race in Louisville. Matthews will clear it away. Another good challenge there by Bonner. Bonner right there preventing Mitch Purse from getting on that ball near the six. Olsen. Lloyd wins the ball back. Lloyd. Back post. What a moment it would be if Carly Lloyd would be able to come up with a late game winner in this one. Four straight days of NWSL soccer beginning tonight. With this one, now maybe an opportunity for Purse, and that one stopped by Lund. Honestly, the defending from racing in this 80 minutes has been 
phenomenal. I mean, last ditch tackles inside this 18, time to perfection, and this isn't the first time. I mean, it's happened about five or six times, just perfectly timed challenges here. Purse gets on the right side, right time, great movement, great run, fabulous ball over the top from Lloyd. And you can just see here, it's that last foot that just comes across, gets a little bit on it, on the ball to take a little bit of sting on it, and Lund comes up with the save. Zerboni to the near side. McCaskill. Matthews trying to give it right back to McCaskill, but right there is Zerboni. Dangerous pass back. Lewandowski able to send it away, and Didasco will play it back for Sheridan. Dangerous chance there. Gotham with a near mistake in their own final third. Make another sub on as the Canadian Evelyn Vian will come on for the goal scorer Ifioma Anamanu. Vian also away with the Canadian side on their victory tour. You can see Gotham with that substitute really trying to go for this game. They want to collect the three points here tonight so they don't have to leave it to the last game to see what their destiny is. Bringing in another attacker that can add a little bit of life. And it was nothing against Anamanu, but just the frustration in those front three not being able to get anything past this back four and the goalkeeper other than the, the early goal in the, in the early moments of this match. And here is Vian with her first touch looking for Lloyd. An opportunity here. Another deflected ball, though, here by Gotham. But it's a different angle, and obviously, Vien just coming into this match gets on this half turn, that little pocket of space where we haven't seen anyone really popping up. They've been more, more not hitting balls from that distance, just in behind the back four. So I love this, just playing to feet and bringing someone like Vien that can do that role perfected perfectly. Malay out wide to Matthews. Back is Eddie. Freeman also back for Gotham. Matthews. Momentarily cut out by Didasco. Malay will get to back to it. McCaskill. Malay brought down by Paige Monahan. For Lauren Malay in her third season out of Colorado College, first two years with the North Carolina Courage. And now Sinclair Miramontez will come in for Neely Martin. Mira Montez in her second season now in Nebraska. Her sister actually plays for Kansas City as well. McCaskill to the top of the area. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Matthews. Turns, knocked off the ball by Zerboni. Monahan, near side, looking for Purse. Purse, an opportunity here for Gotham late. And another block, this one by Savannah McCaskill. Again, another fantastic, you can see this back line and even McCaskill coming back in, just moving their feet, not getting frustrated, keeping the player in front of them, not diving in, not taking any chances in and around this 18 yard box for a potential uh, call to the spot or a free kick outside this 18 yard box. They've been fantastic this match. Gotham now in double digits with corners. Solid crowd tonight at Race in Louisville. Final home game of the season for this Louisville side as they will head to Red Bull Arena for that final game of the season. Of course, that'll be October 31st, so Halloween at 3 p.m. Eastern. But NWSL Championship will be held right here at Lynn Family Stadium, November 20th, 12 p.m. Eastern. Get your tickets at nwslsoccer.com backslash championship. Could Gotham possibly be playing in that championship? A win tonight would guarantee them a spot in the playoffs. Nagasato, scoop pass for McCaskill, brought down. McCaskill knocked away by Freeman. Now Long will push up. Vian has purse ahead. Oh, great challenge by Bonner. Good battle there between Olsen and Lloyd. Montez, back heel outside, Nagasato unable to get there as Didasco will play back to Sheridan. Zerboni. to the sky. Lloyd. And there's the challenge by Olofsson, and this time Carly Lloyd and Gotham will have a free kick. <laughs> can still see that intensity there from Carly Lloyd. And she's going to be handed a yellow card. And you can just see the frustration, obviously, setting into Carly Lloyd wants to win this match to clinch that playoff spot. but. Anytime you go back at a referee, I should know this, the amount of yellow cards for doing this, and it's the correct call from the ref on this initial foul, but it's Carly Lloyd just not happy because it's, it's happened time and time again. Again, right call for the ref to, to show yellow in this instant, but you do love the passion from Lloyd, Lloyd in this match. Lloyd saying it's about time right there. Maybe some other choice words. Great article that she wrote about her time as a professional athlete in the Players' Tribune about the sacrifices that she made along the way to become the player and the competitor that she is. Definitely check that out whenever you have a moment.
Lloyd. Kaiser. Kaiser, the lone goal for Racing Louisville, coming in the 52nd minute, assisted by McClure. Racing looking to possibly add to their goal total. Racing would love to send their home crowd with a victory here tonight. Headed back by Matthews. Matthews shot, and that one just tipped over by Sheridan. What a save by the Gotham keeper. And we saw this from Shayna Matthew on the weekend with the Jamaican women's national team. Just what she added, obviously started that game. This game came in off the bench, but you look at the strength just to bod this player off and then get on the half turn. She knows exactly where the net is. This is a crucial save for Kaylin Sheridan to make in these late minutes of the match with just a minute going to keep this 1-1-1. Malay. Now played away by Lewandowski. Purse. Here's Long. Could that be save of the week? It's only the first game right of the week. There. Because that one looked like it was definitely going under the crossbar. Sheridan does not make that save. No, she had to touch this one over. That one, that, that's going into the back of the net if she doesn't make the save. Vien. Zerboni. Lloyd. Just too heavy of a touch. And there is the final whistle, and this one will end one to one. Kaylin, your thoughts on the 90 minutes of play? I think it was an evenly matched game from start to finish. I think there was maybe 10 minutes at the beginning of the match where Gotham really were on the front, front foot, and then Racing crawled their way back in. Racing's back line for me, can we give four player of the matches? Because they were fantastic here tonight, putting in last stitch tackles against players, not allowing Trapp to get through, making it really a difficult and frustrating game for players like Carly Lloyd. And then Kaylin Sheridan coming up massive at the end to make a huge save to keep this one, one, one. Gotham, they can still clinch on Sunday though. And that you talked about the drama building here for the playoffs. Well, these two teams will meet again on Halloween at 3 p.m. Eastern. And when we come back, we'll have highlights and stats from this one between Race Louisville and Gotham FC.
Grayson Louisville with a goal in the second half to tie this one up against Gotham as we'll take a look back at the highlights from the 90 minutes of play between Grayson Louisville and Gotham FC. And it was a really evenly matched game, but it started with Gotham on the front for, I would say, the first five to ten minutes of this game. Down this left-hand side, Carly Lloyd dancing around players, and then it was Anu Manu that just tucked this one away through traffic, bobbles over that line. But again, Carly Lloyd, I mean, she was fantastic. I mean, through not one player, but two players, and then just having that vision to find Anu Manu, that late run inside that six-yard box. And it wasn't the first time that we saw this. It's actually, this is the second moment as well. It was very much a copy and paste, good defensive play here. And this is, I think it was the racing's wake up call, just this challenge here because the momentum started to shift. Racing started to find their feet a little bit. Gotham, another opportunity here, just going off the woodwork on Umanu and then Carly Lloyd, just getting a brunt end tackle of racing's backside. Um, and then racing here, you see McCall Zerboni just give away an opportunity of McClure, pick this one up in the midfield. And I was shouting, Play down this right-hand side. Ebony Salmon just putting a little bit of doubt into those two defenders. A great run from CeCe Kaiser and an even better finish to tie this one up. McClure, for me, for racing in the second 45 minutes, really changed the game. And Carly Lloyd just had this look in her eye. Wasn't over yet. She really wanted to get the three points here tonight. Another fabulous defensive play and defensive tackle. Just gets enough on this to take the sting out of the shot from Purse to put this one past the goalkeeper. And then in the dying minutes here, a great opportunity from Matthews. We saw this with the Jamaican national team on the weekend. She was fabulous. Coming on as a substitute in this match, just uses her strength to body that off. And then her skill set as well. Get on that half turn, puts this one over the bar. Well, doesn't put it over. It's a fantastic save from Kaylin Sheridan to keep this one 1-1. One, one. Oh, and look at these standings. If this doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. And you look at some of the games coming up this week, and of course, you're looking at OL Reign taking on Kansas City. They don't have that second spot solidified. They could maybe not have a home game, but one of the bigger ones you have to watch out, Washington and Houston as well as North Carolina versus Portland. North Carolina trying to sneak their way into that. Of course, everything coming to a close. November 20, 12 p.m. Eastern, right back here at Lynn Family Stadium. You can get tickets at nwslsoccer.com slash championship to attend those games. But what a game tonight. And these two teams will meet once again on Sunday. Anamana with the goal, her eighth of the season. Kaiser would follow it up for Gotham as this one comes to a close at race in Louisville all tied once again Sunday will be the decider for Gotham if they move on to the playoffs win and they are in thank you for our crew Kaylin Kyle I'm Josh Tolkien for tuning in we will see you again very soon right here on Twitch enjoy your evening